Hello, hello, my weebs and gamers! How are you all doing today? It is the 30th of December here in Japan. Happy New Year's Eve Eve, you know? Hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas and are having a nice holiday period now. What are you guys what have what have you guys been up to? <laughs> did you guys did you guys have a good Christmas? How are you doing, Gun? I am doing so good. This is the first time I felt like I've had a holiday in so long. Uh it's been like it's been a week of uh basically doing I'm gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie, I've basically been just, just been doing nothing. And uh you know what? It's been fucking great. It's been awesome. Had no trash taste recordings. We uh we were done after the 20th, I believe, no, 22nd. Had a lovely Christmas. <clears throat> been playing a lot of games, been watching a lot of anime, of course. Why do you have eye bags again? Uh this is this is just a genetic thing. I have had enough sleep, guys. Do not worry about that. Unfortunately, I was cursed with uh, bad genetics, because both my mum and my dad have really bad eye bags. Um, so, don't worry about that. Go on, have you ever thought about using makeup? Just curious. <laughs> Funnily enough, um, I have thought about using makeup, and uh, I actually have done in previous recordings before, but sometimes I'm just fucking lazy, okay? Some sometimes I'm just lazy, alright? I, I'm not envious. I'm not envious of you girls out there who have to put on makeup every day. I'm like sometimes if there's a big recording day, I'll put it on just just so I look a bit better on camera. But if it's just a stream or a trash taste recording, I'm like, eh, that doesn't matter too much. Whatever. Raiden gacha rolls. Yeah. Next time I play Genshin, which might be today, we'll we'll roll. We'll roll. We'll do a, we'll we'll do a roll stream. <clears throat> I was going to sleep, but not anymore, bro. Go to sleep. Come on. Come on, bro. Come on. What is it? Like 2 a.m. now there? 3 a.m.? I don't know. It's fucking DJ hours. Come on, man. Get, get some nice sleep. I'm kidding, man. It's the fucking holidays. You sleep when you want to. You sleep when you want to, man. But what we are going to be doing today, I know a bunch of you probably want to watch me play a bit of Genshin. I might play some Genshin later. We'll see what I feel like. I didn't really plan this stream too much. I just, you know, I just felt like streaming uh, because I felt like talking about anime today. Because let me tell you what I've been doing this past week. I have been watching a shit ton of anime, okay? I said I've been doing nothing. I've been watching a fuck ton of anime. Why? Because it's the end of the year and I've been making my end of the year best of what 2022 anime. anime. From 2023 and onwards. What anime am I hyped for 2023 onwards? Um, Vinland Saga season two near next season. I'm not been keeping up with what's coming later, later next year. Um, but if you wanna see what I'm hyped for in the coming winter, I've already done a winter 2023 stream. Attack on Titan, of course. Oh, completely forgot about Attack on Titan. Solo leveling's coming out next year? Oh yeah, it is, isn't it? I completely forgot solo leveling. Is Mushoku next year? Hell yeah, I'll be excited for Mushoku. But, as I was saying, I've been watching a fuck ton of anime, basically catching up on everything that I've wanted to catch up on in this past year, so that I can make my best of anime 2022 list, which is coming out in January. Uh, but before that, I thought it would be fun just to talk about this recent fall season. Now that it's almost basically over, I think this fall season was definitely the strongest season of anime we had this year. This man watches more anime than the anime man. Eat your heart out, Joey. That's... That's, uh... Hate to do my bro Joey like this, but guys, that's not hard to do. Come on, come on guys, come on. <laughs> that's that's, uh, that's not an achievement, guys. Come on. Let's be honest here. So what I thought it'd be fun to do to start off with is just to make a tier list of uh, all the anime that I watched in uh, fall 2022. And uh, 
give my opinions on it because I am just like, my brain is just like going, my brain has just been ingesting all of the anime this past week. So I need to like, I need to let a bit of it out. Aside from that, I've also, <sighs> guys, I don't know if you've been keeping up with what I've been saying on Twitter, but I have, um, I've fallen into another rabbit hole, guys. I'm, 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 I'm in, man. I'm, I'm in all the way, uh, because a few days ago, I finished my first Trails game. If you haven't been keeping up with Trash Taste, I had an episode where I was playing around with getting into the Kiseki series, the Trail series, which is a JRPG series that has like 12 games or something, and it's all like one interconnected world. Uh, and I finished the first game of the series, and after I finished it, I went on Steam, and I saw that Steam was having its winter sale, and I bought every game in the series, and I'm just like, oh, what am I, why am I doing this to myself? Oh god. I, could, I just I just bought them all at once because they're all on sale right now, man. I went on Steam and I'm like, holy shit. Like all of the trails, uh, all of trails of Cold Steel was like 40, 60% off. Fuck yeah, I'll just buy it all now, man. Just buy it all now. Will I play it all anytime soon? Probably not. But I'm already, I'm already like a few hours into Trails of the Sky second chapter, having a very good time. So see you guys in a year when I maybe catch up. Maybe see you in five years when I catch up. I don't know how long it's going to take me to play through all of them. Sky's second chapter is amazing. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. Like, if I didn't know that there was going to be a payoff with all of this game series, I probably would have dropped Trails, uh, Trails in the Sky first chapter because it, uh... It starts off slow. It's <laughs> like even even by my patience, even like playing through the prologue in the first two chapters, I was like, "When? Where's the plot? Where? Where does the plot kick in? I'm, I'm waiting for the plot." I was twenty hours in before I was like, "Oh, okay, there's the plot." I finally, I, I, I finally found the plot, and I was twenty hours into this game, and I was like, oh, "Maybe, maybe Trails isn't for me." And then the final chapter hit, and then the ending hit, and I was just like, holy shit. Okay, I'm, I'm in, I'm hooked, and I'm in, this I'm in this for the long run. And all it took was 40 hours, guys. All, all it took was, all it took was 40 hours, and, then, and, and that was it, and I'm invested. <laughs> guys, this, this, this is like the next level One Piece fan, man. This is, this is the next level One Piece fan. Guys, okay, no, no. I, I swear to God, swear to God, 40 hours in, gets pretty good, okay, gets pretty good, 40 hours in, second chapter, really, really enjoying it. 40, 40 hours, well, to be, to be fair, 40 hours in comparison to how many hours you spend, I'm going to spend on this entire series is like a drop in the bucket, but you know, 40 hours, uh, only 40 hours, right guys, it's only 40 hours in this entire series, and, th and then you get hooked. Me when I cope, yeah. <laughs> but, shall we start with the fall season? Because, uh, as I was saying before, I think this fall season was absolutely fucking stacked. I think that it was the strongest season we've had this year. Uh, and basically most of my time was spent catching up to everything I wanted to watch this season, which was a hell of a lot of things. Uh, I think one of the biggest differences between this year and last year is that I think last year we got a lot of new, exciting, like new original or just new anime in general. Hey, honey. Oh, did you, did you make me coffee? Yeah. Oh. See, I'm trying to... Oh, thank you, honey. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I love you. I love you. I made it with espresso. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> that's a wife right there. That's that's a wife right there. <laughs> honey, you may go now. <laughs> wife moment, yeah. <laughs> 
But what was I saying before? Have you read Dan Danden, author of the Chainsaw Mods Assistant? Thank you very much for the twenty dollars, man. Uh, no, I have not read Dan 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 yet. Um, I haven't read Hell's Paradise either, which is two ones, two manga series that I want to read. Uh, but I will read it eventually. I don't know if I'm going to wait for an anime announcement because I'm pretty sure it's going to get an anime. Like. I think Hell's Paradise is getting an anime, isn't it? It's by uh, Mappa, right? So I think they're going to get an anime. So if I think something's going to get an anime, I normally try to wait off on reading it, even if I know it's good. I mean, I waited off on reading Chainsaw Man, and I'm even watching the anime for Chainsaw Man before reading it because I'm a fucking psycho. <clears throat> so yeah, I'll probably I'll probably wait like another year for an anime announcement, and if um, and if an anime doesn't get announced, then I'll read it. And then probably when I read it, that's when it'll get announced. <sighs> you waited for the anime for One Piece too? Yep. Good day, Garnt. Would you ever try reading Martial World or Against the Gods novels? I'd love to hear your opinion. I have not heard of them. Are they, uh, are they J novels? Are they light novels? Are they K novels? Are they web novels? I just wanted some anime rankings, man. Now I feel so single. Thanks, bro. <laughs> bro. <laughs> bro, don't worry, man. We'll, we'll get to the anime rankings, man. We'll get to the anime rankings. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, there's hope, bro, bros. There's hope. Look, all I'm saying, bros, is I'm... I'm the fucking biggest, I'm the fucking biggest weeb of all time, and if I could find love, I believe in you bros, man. I believe in you bros. Don't worry. Copium. Copium and hopium at the same time. <laughs> um, but, I think the biggest difference between this year and last year in terms of anime is that last year we had a lot of new exciting anime we had a lot of anime originals we had a lot of new franchises coming out and i feel like this was the year for the really really hard hitting sequels and the big franchise sequels uh there weren't as many like new anime this year that stood out to me as much as last year uh but that was basically replaced by pretty much every big sequel just hitting every note that I expect them to hit. <clears throat> but we are starting with Akiba Made Akiba Made Wars. Now, if you don't know about Akiba Made Wars, it's made by PA Works and it's kind of like a homage to like Yakuza movies except it's done with maids in Akihabara. That's that was it. <laughs> That's it. S tier, S tier. Every, everyone, everyone's shooting for S tier. <clears throat> I okay. So my honest opinion about Akiba Made Wars, PA Works has made two really out there anime this year. First was Akiba Made Wars, and the second was your boy Kongming. Both had like really, really weird ass concepts and weird ass things going on in it. And I'm going to say I preferred uh, Paripi Kome, like, more than Akiba Maid Wars. I think the middle of Akiba Maid Wars kind of dragged on for me, because one of the big things is that I really, really enjoyed, like, the first two episodes. I really, really enjoyed the first two episodes, and then the cons- and then it kind of lost its charm, right? Because the big- the big difference for me with Akiba Maid Wars and your boy Kongming is that like, I feel like the, um, Paripi Kome had like the music aspect to it, which, I, which is why I've really enjoyed and seeing the progression of this singer becoming popular. They are Chinese wuxia web novels, heavy power fantasy with great world building. Hope oh. you have time to give them a try. Chinese web novels, bro. <laughs> Bro, do you even cultivate? Does it do they do they do they include a cultivation uh, storyline? Because my god, my god, we think the isekai genre is saturated in fucking anime and light novels, bro. I I I read Chinese novels and I I read Chinese manhwa and it's just like, bro, it's all, it's all cultivation, man. 
<laughs> but um un unlike Paripi Kome, Akiba Maid Wars didn't have something throughout its entire run that really like hooked me. And for like the middle bit, it kind of lost its charm. Um what I liked is that the ending was a little bit more serious. And I like the more serious storyline at the end. But at the end of the day, after the first two episodes, I just didn't find it that funny. That's 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 just that's just a me. I just didn't find it that funny. You might you might have found what was going on way more funnier than I did. I just felt I just thought it lost its charm after the first few episodes. Didn't really find it that funny. And then it hooked me a little bit more at the end. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give this one a B tier. It wasn't I enjoyed it. It wasn't bad, but I, I I feel like I feel like with some wacky premises, if it doesn't do something interesting outside of that wacky premise, uh, then I'm going to get a little bit bored of it, unless unless there's something else that hooks me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a B tier. It's still a good show, but there are some really really good shows this year, and this one didn't stand out as much as other shows. <clears throat> Arc Knights, as we all know. My fellow Gacha Gamers, Gacha Games are now getting anime adaptations. We've seen that the we've seen the Genshin adaptations. We've had some very, very bad Gacha adaptations in the past. And only the only good ones I can think of were basically <laughs> were basically all Fate Go. Fate Go was like the only good Gacha adaptations. Um the only good gacha adaptations I could think of before. Arcanize wasn't bad. <laughs> It's I, I came in thinking that this was going to fucking suck. Arc I thought Arknights was going to fucking suck. Oh, Princess Connect? Fuck, I, com I completely forgot about Princess Connect, but I don't play Princess Connect, so that's the big reason why. I thought Arknights was going to suck, and I think it was my low expectations coming into it that made Arknights a bit more surprising for me because it was way better than what I thought it was going to be because this adapted what I think is the worst part of the story in Ark Knights uh, because let's be honest, most people skipped the beginning few chapters of the Ark Knight story because it was cliche as hell. <laughs> um, but the animation was better than what I thought it was going to be. They handled the story better than what I thought it was going to be. Um, so I kind of enjoyed Ark Knights. I don't know. Maybe that's just my fucking gacha game. And maybe like gacha has just broken my game. Uh, sorry, maybe gacha has just broken my mind. Um, I I enjoy this more than I thought I would. Uh, would I recommend this to anyone who has not played Ark Knights? Hell no. Would I even recommend this to people who casually are into Ark Knights? Probably not. Like, Connor was really into Ark Knights. He was way more into Ark Knights than me. And I still would not recommend this to him. Uh, but the animation didn't look bad. The animation was better than what I thought it was going to be. Uh, I, I want to rate this a C, but I think in terms of enjoyment, I like, it's a low B for me. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go with B for broke because that's what Ark Knights made us all. It was, it was B for broke for me. But if, if I were to like put this through like a critic brain and everything like that, if I was to put this through a critic brain, it would be a C. But um, I'm a degenerate. I'm a gacha degenerate, bro. <laughs> I'm a gacha degenerate. I'm broke as fuck. It's going in B. I think this one is uh, Beast Tamers. Uh, I'll be honest, I didn't watch this past episode 3 because it was... Is this one Beast Tamers? I want to make sure. <clears throat> you shown no part? Yeah, it was, it was Beast Tamers. Yeah, it was... It's... This, this one's an... This one's an... This one's an easy C. It wasn't... It's not horrible. This is... This, like, when people talk about mid, this is the definition of mid, okay? This is, like, when people are just, when people look at shit like Demon Slayer and they're like, mid. I'm like, you don't fucking know what mid means, motherfucker, okay? 
<laughs> you ain't you ain't seen me. Try being an isekai fantasy fan, man. We we were born in the mid, man. We know what true mid is, okay? This is a truly mid ass show. This one is the princess, uh, the bibliophile princess. I'll be honest, I also was unimpressed by this one. This one... This, this one kind of like failed to grab me. I don't know if I'm just not the target audience for this or if it was just a bad adaptation. It just felt like Discount Bookworm. Uh, <laughs> I feel bad saying that because I feel like I went into this being like, oh, I'm going to pick, I'm going to compare this to the bookworm isekai, which I fucking love and it's fucking amazing. And that's my only other frame of reference. So compared to that, this was just a massive, massive step down. Didn't really enjoy it that much. And I don't know if it's the adaptations fault or if it's the source material because I am not familiar with the source material. But this also goes into the C tier. Now, we get to our first big fucking show, I think. We get to, we get to the first big show, Bleach. All right. Now, how do we feel about Bleach, guys? How do we feel about Bleach? Because do you know what this... <clears throat> Do you know what this show made? Do you know? Do you know what this re-release of Bleach made me realize? It's made me realize, holy shit! Bleach fans are dedicated as fuck, man. I did not realize. I did not realize that Bleach, Bleach fans were this dedicated to their cause. <laughs> um, because was it? Is it just me? It, like, was is it just me? where before this new Bleach anime came out, like Bleach, everyone fucking dunked on Bleach. Everyone loved to fucking dunk on Bleach. And then finally, when, uh, <clears throat> when Bleach came out. Bleach fans SMH can't believe. <laughs> <clears throat> when this came out, every, everyone, Bleach was like suddenly cool again. It was suddenly, like Bleach was suddenly peak. It was suddenly like the best anime of all time. It was suddenly like, it's still, it's still like, like, it's still like got a nine point something rating on Mao's. Let me check. Bleach thousand year war arc. Mao, what's, what's his rating on Mao? Yeah, still like 9.17, which, oh, it's ranked number one. <laughs> it's ranked number one. <laughs> Ain't no way. Ain't no way it's the top anime of all time. What the hell? I did not realize it was the top number one ranked anime on Mal. Yo, what the fuck? <laughs> Holy shit. We've beaten the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood fans, but at what, at what cost, guys? At what cost? <laughs> we've, repl we've replaced the FMA fans with Bleach fans. What is happening? Is this a good thing? <laughs> We've used the evil to defeat the evil guys. <laughs> like, here's the thing. I've always been very vocal about my criticisms on Bleach. Um, there's a lot about Bleach that I feel dropped the ball after like midway through the, the Rankar arc and the Fullbring arc I thought was pretty bad. Um, but I remember reading the manga of the Thousand Year Blood War arc, and I, I remember thinking, damn, like the beginning of this, it fucking, it goes hard. It goes absolutely hard. Uh, and then I remember it was about mid, it was, it was like, it was the latter half of this arc where I really feel like this arc of Bleach started to falter. Um, so I feel like there is a lot of nostalgia playing up on it's being the number one ranked anime on Mal right now, which I don't think it is. Uh, having said that, this anime goes fucking hard. And I forgot how hard Bleach could go. Like, this is, I think this is one of the best animated shows Studio Piero have done. Because normally with Studio, Studio Piero shows, you have like one or two like really, really good animated episodes, right? And then the rest of the episodes 
are like really like okay like they're they're like okay animated go watch like classic naruto go watch naruto shippuden and like most of the episodes are like pretty average to good and then you have like one or two fucking amazing episodes every season bleach thousand year blood war arc every episode has had like s tier animation holy fuck i did not know that they were capable of this consistent high quality it's fucking insane the soundtrack is insane as well i mean the soundtrack of bleach is something that cannot be criticized <laughs> bleach soundtrack goes fucking hard okay it's always gone hard holy shit i was i remember, I remember like when this came out i remember listening to like some oh like some og bleach like bleach tunes and i forgot how fucking cool bleaches this this just this is just reminding me just like how fucking cool bleach is in general right um it's got so much style it's just got the drip man it's just got that fucking drip okay it's got that drip okay and i, f I forgot how stylized it was over pretty much all of its competitors and even though bleach comparative compared to other shonens now is you know it's it's past its generation we've gone into a new generation of shonen now we've have we have a new generation of anime fans with jujutsu kaisen and chainsaw man and fucking <clears throat> my year academia and yet still still watching this bleach stylizes on all of them man bleach bleach is more style than everyone the character designs still go fucking hard i i i think this season at the moment is going insane as hell um i'm going to give it a high a tier it's not s yet just because just because i want to see how i want to see how it handles the second half of this arc because if if it's able to fix some of the some of the issues i had with the manga uh, if, it's, if it's able to fix some of the issues I had with the manga going into the second half of this arc, then it will be an S tier. It will be an S tier. But right now, it is an A tier. Um, and I enjoy, I'm enjoying this arc way more than I thought I would. I, I'm enjoying this arc way more than I thought I would. You're not being serious? Am I not being serious because I'm not putting it high enough? Or am I not being serious because I'm putting it too high? Because I think A is a very, very fair rating. <clears throat> the first invasion was always the best. The first invasion was always the best part of the arc. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree that the first invasion was the best part of the arc. <clears throat> it's, it's the best part of the arc. And... I don't know. I I'm, I'm I'm hoping it does more because I know that Kubo had to rush the ending of this and I really do hope that it goes out of his way and it gives a bit more time to some of the latter half of this arc. But you are judging the first half right now. I you know, Ichigo I'm Ichigo has a PS5 S tier. Ichigo has a PS5. <laughs> Anime original ending I'm copium. I'm I'm coping, man. I'm fucking coping. I'm coping so fucking hard. I really hope. I really, really fucking hope, man. I'm I'm hoping. I'm hoping out of hope. Okay. Let me tell you the reason I'm putting it high A tier right now. And this is purely based on enjoyment. I am not a bleach fan. Um I have very, very fond memories of Bleach, but at the end of the day, I'm not the biggest Bleach fan. You know, the, I Bleach was my least favorite out of the big three shown in back in the day. Um and I'm not even sure that I would put Bleach in my top ten shonens of all time. So it's it's a testament that someone who isn't a Bleach fan, uh, someone who isn't a be Bleach fan is enjoying Bleach this much, okay? And the S tiers are reserved for some other shows that I am enjoying the absolute shit out of. I'm a Bleach fan too. <laughs> Not that kind of Bleach. <laughs> Moving 
on though god i didn't i didn't expect there to be see this is this is what i'm talking about man this is what i'm fucking talking about holy fucking shit bleach fans you guys are passionate as fuck man i didn't expect to get this much salt this early on <laughs> <laughs> Every people are like, yo, you put an A tier? A tier? It's a fucking A tier? You basically just called it mid, bro. You called it mid. What the fuck? Blue lock. <clears throat> Blue lock. I've always wanted a football anime. We've had football animes before, but it's um <clears throat> but I've never found a football anime that I've really, really enjoyed. Uh, I thought for the longest, I thought for the longest time that part of the reason for that was because in comparison to like basketball anime or something, um, like a football team just has too many plays that you need to give attention to. Um, I was proved absolutely wrong this year because we had not one great football anime this year. We had two great football anime this year and both are on different sides of the both are on different sides of the spectrum. Um, we had uh, um, we had Ao Ashi like earlier in spring, which was great. It's basically production IG doing what production IG do best with sports anime. Um, it's a much more like realistic, character driven football anime. Blue Lock is for those that just want the fucking hype behind football. Blue Lock puts away like realistic settings and just gives you pure undistilled football fucking hype, man. I enjoyed Blue Lock so much. I'm a footy fan. Um, it's it's an A tier as well. It's not as good as Bleach. It's not, Bleach fans, Bleach before, before, before you fucking come off and kill me, it's not as good as Bleach, okay? Don't worry, I'm putting Bleach at a high A, okay guys? <laughs> it's, it's too high? Nah, I don't think it's too high. Ain't too high, man. One thing I will say though is that even though I enjoyed Blue Lock a lot this season, even though I enjoyed it a lot, still was less hype than World Cup though, right? It's it's like if the World Cup was an anime, the World Cup would be fucking S tier. It's it's weird that it aired at the same time as the World Cup because I was more excited watching actual real football than I am watching fake football, which is weird because normally I get more excited watching uh, sports anime because we're fucking weebs, we hate sports, but holy shit, the, the World Cup this year was so fucking hype. The Japan arc in the World Cup this year, that's that was an S tier arc, okay? It's weird that you look at the Japan versus Spain match, and if that wasn't if that was in Blue Lock, right? If that Japan versus Spain match was in Blue Lock, people would be like, yo, this is so fucking unrealistic. What the fuck? This is so this is so anime. <laughs> right? <laughs> Yo, that guy kept the ball in by like one millimeter and then scored the winning goal. Nah, bro, what? Bro, too fake, man. What the hell, man? Fake, what the hell? Um, Yeah, real life was weirder than anime this season. This year, I have to say. <clears throat> Blue Lock has to be real. <laughs> Script writers were in their bag. Yeah, I mean. Tier is going to go to one of your hot takes. Congrats on ending the year with a bang. <laughs> oh man, it's... I don't think Bleach at A tier is a hot take. In what world is, is putting any show in A tier a hot take? But... Um... Blue Lock is just so much fucking fun. I love the fact that they did away with the typical sports anime structure of oh guys guys let's go to nat let's go to national guys oh yeah let's let's win with the power of friendship oh we're going to nationals no what i like is they specifically said we are going to win the world cup and this is how we're going to win the world cup um and let's just put all of this setting in a tournament arc we 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 cut out the bullshit we just went into a fucking squid game battle royale tournament arc and i'm just like why did more sports anime not do this what why did more sports anime not fucking do this and what what i liked is that explores an aspect of sports 
um, that not many other sports anime explore, which is this idea of having to be selfish, okay? Because you look at some of the top athletes, right? <clears throat> you look at you look at definitely some of the top um, definitely some some of the top strikers. And with maybe the exception of like fucking Messi, because Messi is like the greatest of all time and he can shine that much uh, without being, uh, he can shine that much without being, you know, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Without being selfish, okay? Uh, with, without being selfish, the, like most of the top strikers need to have a certain amount of selfishness to them. Otherwise they wouldn't shine as brightly as they do. They need to they need to have the ego, right? They need everyone needs a bit of Zlatan in them, okay? Everyone can learn from having a bit of Zlatan Ibrahimovic uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Fuck Zlatan, why do you have such a fucking hard name to pronounce? <laughs> Messi's not a striker. He's he's not a striker. But especially in a striker position, you need to have a bit of ego. You need to have a bit of selfishness because at the end of the day, you're going to be the one scoring those goals. And I like that it explored that aspect of it in instead of just being like, yo, teamwork, guys. Yeah, it's all about the teamwork, which it is. It is. That's an, that's an important aspect. But, you know, being a superstar, being a little bit selfish, that's also important as well. And I really, really enjoyed the fact that they included that in the series. <clears throat> Everyone, everyone can learn from God. Everyone needs God. Zlatan is God. <laughs> Honestly, fuck. I, I just has anyone seen Zlatan interviews? I fucking love Zlatan interviews. He's like, he's like every Chuck Norris meme if if it wasn't a meme, you know. <laughs> it's it's so fucking good. Okay. What's next? C Danchi. This one was shit. This one was a D tier. Um, this was a horror anime. I don't know if it was produced by Adult Swim. <clears throat> I don't know if it was produced by Adult Swim, but I think it was airing on Adult Swim. Uh, it was a it was it was a horror anime that wasn't scary. So I don't know. It was only four episodes, and uh, it, it, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. I don't know. I don't know if anyone here watched it, but it's not worth watching. We're gonna move on. Next, Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man. <laughs> oh, oh, guys, guys! It's Chainsaw Man. Everyone's favorite, right? Everyone's favorite. It's uh, everyone's favorite, right? Everyone's favorite, guys. I'd be lying if I put it anywhere but S tier. But God, but Gigok, you put it above Bleach. I can't believe you put it above Bleach, Gigok. No, oh my God, fuck, I can't believe Gigok put it above Bleach. Yes, I enjoyed Chainsaw Man more than Bleach. <laughs> so fucking sue me, okay? <laughs> I have angered the Shonen fans. This is this is why I can't fucking talk about Shonen, okay? I can't talk about Shonen without pissing off 10 million fans, okay? Now, okay. Now that now that I have um now that I've put a hit now that I've put every Bleach fan <laughs> No, now that I'm on every Bleach fan's hit list. Um yeah, this is just a preference thing. I think I enjoyed Chainsaw Man more than Bleach, and I just enjoyed Chainsaw Man a fuck ton anyway. People, you know, with something like Chainsaw Man, it's still it's still early days, right? It's still early days, and I don't think Chainsaw Man is nearly, nearly, nearly reached its peak at all. Okay. Um, it's like a low. It's like a low S tier. It's not like a high S tier. It's a low S tier, and the reason, <clears throat> the reason is, it's a low S tier is that we we we're literally like just beginning, but with what we've been shown so far, I compare the beginning of Chainsaw Man to like the first twelve episodes of Jujutsu Kaisen. I compare it to the first twelve episodes of My Hero Academia and some of the other hype shonens uh, that have come out 
you know, this generation. And it has burst onto the scene, in my opinion, a lot faster than previous Shonen's. Remember in like, remember like the first 12 episodes of Demon Slayer? Fucking nobody was talking about Demon Slayer until like episode 18, 19, okay? Um, D Chainsaw Man f had an impossible amount of hype to meet. Did it meet the hype? Of course it wasn't. It was never going to meet that hype with just 12 episodes. <laughs> But Chainsaw Man immediately blew up, um, and it had a it had a pretty good attempt at meeting that hype. Okay, because I think the first eight episodes of Chainsaw Man were pretty formulaic shonen, um, and then there's a big fucking turn, and I feel like at that turn is where we truly saw the type of story this was going to become. Because I think a lot of people who don't know what Chainsaw Man is going to be about, who don't know Tatsuki Fujimoto, the author behind it, they look at this and they think, oh, it's called Chainsaw Man, and we've got a guy who is a chainsaw, and we've got a bunch of action. It's an action show. Um, but I feel like the real... I feel like the real strengths is going to come out when we see some of the character writing be able to shine. The action delivered immensely. The, the action was fucking insane. I think Mappa knocked it out of the park. I think that the... <clears throat> I think that the complaints about CG was overblown as fuck. I think... Because, like, we had... I, I don't know what it is about anime fans and, like, seeing two frames of CG, but there were some dodgy shots in episode one, and I think that was basically it. I think the only reason it stood out so much was just because of how incredible the show looked. But I feel like, but I feel like just out, even just outside of the action scenes, it just looks, I, I think it's, I think it's the best looking show this season. Okay. Um, Bleach fans, I'll give you a W. I think the action scenes in Bleach are better, you know, uh, but I feel like Chainsaw Man, the action scenes were still great, but it's every as or like almost every aspect of Chainsaw Man just looks fucking gorgeous. And I think a lot of this was due to how much, you know, <clears throat> how much creativity Mapper put into this. Because I think I remember reading an article. Someone someone can confirm me on this, but I feel like I think I read an I think I heard and I read an article that Mappa funded Chainsaw Man like 100%. They funded the animation and everything 100% by themselves, which gave them a lot more creative control over over the production and it really really shows because that is true. Yes. <clears throat> no production committees. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So Chains the Chainsaw Man production had no production committees. It was funded by the animation studio. And what did this mean? It means it gave them much more creative control than you'd normally see in an anime production because normally you have a lot of a lot of hands adding to the basket, so a lot of people want different things. With Chainsaw Man uh, only answering to Shonen and Jump themselves. Yeah, okay. That's that's why that's what I assumed. Um and it really showed because having read what's been adapted so far and having watched the anime, both take this story that's been written and both use their medium to the fullest potential. Tatsuki Fujimoto is a fucking genius for being able to draw manga the way he does, panel using paneling the way he does. Um, and he does a lot of things in the Chainsaw Man manga, which I feel can't be replicated in the anime but then the anime doesn't replicate them. The anime goes its own path and it tries to do its own thing without without missing the big story beats of, you know, of the core story. And it uses anime to its full potential, in my opinion, in my opinion. Um, and this is even just outside of fight scenes, okay? Because people look at a show like Chainsaw Man, they think, oh, I'm gonna think about the fight scenes. And they they forget about all of the smaller, all of the quieter moments that people might not talk about. Um, and that's Chainsaw Man. It is a S tier production in pretty much every way possible. It's fucking insane that it has 12 different ending 
<clears throat> it, it has it's insane that it has like 12 different fucking ending songs what the hell <laughs> the salt here is amazing <laughs> Of course the salt here is going to be amazing. Oh, this is this is why we rank anime, man. Just to feel the salt. <clears throat> like like here's <clears throat> here's here's the thing. Here's here's the thing about all the salt behind Chainsaw Man, okay? Here's 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 the thing behind all the salt behind Chainsaw Man, okay? That I've noticed. You can say it's not for you. You can say it's overhyped, overrated, and everything else. But there's little, there's little I've heard that people can say that can bring it down, you know? You can have something really good, right? But, but you know, it might not be for you, or it might just be really hyped and everything like that. But if I think about some of the criticisms for Chainsaw Man, there's not much I can, there's not much I can say. There's, there's, there's not much I can, there's not, there's not much I can say aside from like very, very small minor nitpicks. Um, bad adaptations equals L take. Ah, oh, this. Anyone who says Chainsaw Man, like, did anyone see that petition that got two thousand signatures that said remake Chainsaw Man? Are you fucking kidding me? That pissed me off so much. <laughs> <laughs> I could, I could not fucking believe it. Oh my god! I ain't, I ain't seen a bigger L this year, man. <clears throat> like, I think Chainsaw Man is what every adaptation needs. It's. Chainsaw Man takes the approach of not trying to completely replicate the manga one for one. It tries to take what the manga does and try to bring its strengths to its to the medium of anime and do its own thing. If you want a faster paced story, um, then go read the manga. The manga is way faster paced and some people enjoy that. Um, me personally, I have really enjoyed the slower pace of the anime because it really gave time to have some of the more dramatic moments hit even harder. Um, and that's and that's just my personal opinion, you know. It's like it's like we we have we have two we have two different versions of an of an amazing story, and just pick whatever you want. <clears throat> but to me, Chainsaw Man is a low S tier. Is it my anime of the year? No, I'm not going to spoil what my anime of the year is. Uh, but Chainsaw Man is definitely one of my favorite anime of the year. Haters gonna hate. Moving on, Cool Boys Danchi. I think this is Cool Boys Danchi. Let me double check. Um. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's Cool Boy Danchi. This was this was a slice of life with a bunch of guys. I'll be honest. I only saw a few episodes of this. Um, if you enjoy slice of life. Um, this might be more like this might be more for you. Uh, it's not C tier. I would put this at B tier for what I saw for Slice of Life. It's not BL. It's just cute boys do cute things, basically. <laughs> it's cute. Moving on, B. Do it yourself. We got another Slice of Life show. <clears throat> Uh, this one is a Slice of Life show that is a bunch of girls who do it themselves. It's... <laughs> something about this just fucking appealed to me. And I don't know what it is, right? This show appealed to my dad energy because I don't normally like Slice of Life shows at all, but just just watching cute girls do DIY CSM and stuff like that. GF Pob and Makima hand holding scenes though good lot. Bless Mappa. Actually, yeah, I want <laughs> you just fucking reminded me. Okay, you just run okay. Let's go back to Chainsaw Man for a bit. Holy fuck. That hand holding scene can we just talk about that hand holding scene for a second? I just I just I forgot that I needed to gush about that hand holding scene. My fucking god Holy shit. 
I didn't know, I didn't know hand holding could unironically get me that fucking bricked up. <laughs> it's, it's just. <laughs> fucking. We memed for so long in the anime community. You know, we, we memed about, oh, it's, it's wholesome hand holding, guys. It's wholesome hand holding. No. Chainsaw Man had to go, no. You know what? We're going to ruin hand holding as well. Because now when I think hand holding, I'm going to think fucking Chainsaw Man. I'm going to think, why don't, I, why don't I have that kind of hand holding in my life? <laughs> like, it, it made me sad. It made me sad, and I did go check this. It made me sad that there is no hand-holding tag in any hentai. <laughs> I, I, I had to double check if the hand-holding tag exists, and it doesn't exist, god damn it. <laughs> it doesn't exist. It was just a meme. It was just a meme, god damn it. <laughs> but, whole oh, yeah. But holy hell, Mark Makima is just like Makima is just she she is too powerful. There should be no being that powerful, okay? No being should elicit the horny that much. She 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 she's too powerful. Alright. <laughs> the puke scene. Oh my god. <laughs> no. <clears throat> Alright, back to do it yourself. Um so with do it yourself, like I was saying, it, it elicited it elicited like a dad energy in me. Uh, I really enjoyed seeing cute girls just doing like five. <laughs> I just, it just I just realized it's basically five minute craft the anime because that's that's what it is. <clears throat> Normally I don't like cute girls doing cute things, so this one surprised me a lot. Maybe I'm just reaching that age where just seeing people do woodwork and homemade stuff was just very, very calming. One thing that I've really enjoyed about this is that it just, it, it felt like, I really liked the art style because if something looks too moe, it kind of puts me off. This one felt a bit more like Azekin, not exactly Azekin. It, it wasn't exactly Azekin, but it was more that kind of direction. And I feel like that was one of the big selling points for me because I've seen too many like overly moe moe character designs. And if they had looked like that, I probably would have enjoyed this way less than I would have. I also like the fact that this, that it felt like there was a bit of thought put into the world building for this. I don't know why. I don't know why they needed, they felt like they needed to do that, but there were some devices that, like, there were some, like, devices that, you know, I, I feel, was it in the first episode where one of the girls had, was on, like, a rollerblade or something, or an electronic rollerblade or something like that? <laughs> um, and, like, it was, it was a world where Amazon existed, but it was more dystopian world where you get packages delivered in through like, <laughs> through drones and stuff like that. <gasps> Booba. <laughs> so yeah. So I really enjoyed Do Yourself. I'm gonna take a quick pre-break. Be right back. Hold on, hold on just a second. Ooh.
I am back. I mean, I had to look at what the fuck this was because I didn't see this before on the f on the full chart. All I saw was just like, is that a fucking bra face? Is that is that a bra face right there? <laughs> and I, I looked it up and I realized why I didn't see this on full chart. It's a uh, it's a TV short, so I haven't actually watched this one at all. I kind of missed this one. Uh, I don't know what this one's about. All I see is a bruh face. Uh, seems like it's an ASMR anime. I'm gonna put no, I'm gonna put no opinion on this. Didn't see this one. It's S tier. <laughs> it's, okay guys, is it S tier or is it S tier? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> no idea. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys let's put it above bleach then all right so this one goes above <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> all right moving on moving on um eminence in the shadows oh fuck yeah we got our first isekai guys <laughs> All right, all right, guys. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go full isekai trash man for a second. All right. Fucking love this show. I lo I love I love this show so fucking much, man. It's it's just it's so much fun. It's so unapologetic with what it is. The the protagonist is fucking hilarious. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Um, would I say this is a good show? Honestly, I don't know. It's, I don't know if Isekai has rotted my brain so much. I like, East, no, I'm saying this. Isekai has rotted my brain so much, I genuinely can't tell if this is like a good, good show or if I'm just enjoying it too much, okay? Gen I genuinely can't tell. <clears throat> but it's so, it's, it's a show that's so unapologetic with what it is. Uh, and what it's about that I just it's it's everything that I it's everything that I love in an isekai my oh my fucking god when for for those of you who haven't seen it every time the every time the main protagonist speaks English every time the main protagonist speaks English it is a fucking S tier scene <laughs> it you know you know there's a there's a fine line there's there's a very fine line between cringe and cool and every time the main protagonist speaks english it is it is it fucking strides that line okay but i <laughs> but it cracks me up every time i think the first i think there's there's two scenes there's two scenes there's one where he says i need more power <laughs> it's, <laughs> and, and it just remembering that scene was uh just cracked me up so much but the the goat scene the real the real fucking s tier scene is the i am atomic scene and i i, I think people need to watch this anime just for that one scene alone you know what you know what? if you're not watching isekai you're not gonna fucking watch this okay i'm just gonna fucking tell you what the scene's about so the main character right <clears throat> so i was telling i was telling this to sydney okay because i needed to tell someone about this all right i needed to tell someone about this um so the main character at the beginning uh the main character at the beginning he's kind of like he's kind of like a batman right kind of thing where he tries to solve crimes and stuff by himself and he gets pretty good at it. He gets like pretty good at martial arts and everything like that. And then he realized that no matter how powerful he could become in the real world, that he, you know, he could be the top martial artist of all time, but he could still, if an atomic bomb dropped in Japan, there's nothing he could do. There's absolutely nothing he can do. He felt the limits to humanity. So then he gets reincarnated to a fantasy world and he gets isekai and then he, you know, it's a, it's a world where magic exists. And so, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> I can't even describe the scene without cracking up. <laughs> and, so, and so he realizes that, <gasps> okay. Atomic. 
And so he realizes that in this fantasy world, he can now become more powerful. He has magic, okay? He can become, he can become the entity that he dreamed of becoming. And so the answer for him, the answer to him to defeat the atomic bomb is for him to become an atomic bomb himself. <laughs> and, and, and so to defeat the atomic bomb, he became an atomic bomb. <laughs> and it's just, it's so fucking stupid, but it's amazing. It's so fucking amazing, man. What a chat. What a fucking chat. You know what? I can't beat the atom bomb. I'm going to become the atom bomb. I am atomic. Uh, this is, this is, this is a B tier. Probably an A tier if I went for enjoyment, but it's, I, I can't say, I, I can't say with my, yeah. I can't, I can't say with whole heart that it's on the same level, it's on the same tier as these other shows, but I, I'm enjoying it so much. I'm enjoying it a lot, man. <laughs> Uh, would I recommend it to anyone who's not into isekai? Absolutely not. That's why it's a beta. <laughs> a tiers like these shows, these shows, guys, these shows I can actually recommend to people who just enjoy anime and stuff like that. This one, I can't in good faith recommend to anyone who doesn't enjoy isekai, right? <laughs> All right, moving on. Um, this one was a second series, haven't seen, haven't seen, this one. <sighs> this one was the farming isekai, it's a fucking D tier, holy shit, how are we in 2022? And we have the worst CG dragon I think I've ever seen in anime, my god. This one... I don't, I don't know if you've seen the CG dragon in this one. I put it at the end of my fall 2022 video. Uh, this is... Uh, it's, it's somehow surpassed the Fate 2004 CG dragon. And I thought, I thought that was the bar. I thought that was the bar of awful CG dragons. This somehow found a way to like surpass that in, 20, in 2022. Even worse than Arifretta's dragon? Yes, even fucking worse. It looks so bad. It literally looks like claymation. <laughs> it looks like claymation. Um, I really wanted just this just to be a normal farming isekai, but it turns out just to be a normal power fantasy isekai where the guy's just super OP. There's one goofy scene in it where he kills this dragon with a carrot, which was kind of funny. And then that was it. I, I, I dropped the show. <clears throat> uh, we have the Berserk movie TV edits. I haven't actually watched this one, if um, but I have seen all of the movies, which I think is the same thing, right? Can I, has anyone actually seen this Berserk one, this Berserk TV series at all? Can can you confirm is if it's basically the same as the movie before I start talking? <laughs> nope, nope, no one's seen it. No one's seen it. <clears throat> okay, well, let me see. I'm gonna talk about this as if it is the Berserk movies, um, because I really liked the Berserk Golden Age arc adapta uh, adaptations. Uh, my big problem with it was that my big problem with the Berserk adaptations was that it did not have enough time with the characters themselves. Um, I, I think the uh, I think the Eclipse was done better in the movies than it did, than it was the TV series. Um, but everything preceding that, preceding is that the right word? Everything before that, I thought was better 
in the original Berserk TV series. Uh, and so I would... If I were to rate if I were to rate the movies, I would also I would also put it at like B tier level. Um <clears throat> if if this if this edit like fixes the issues, then I'm happy to like raise it up. I'll be honest, I didn't watch it and I haven't heard anyone really talk about it. So that's why I didn't really go out my way to watch it. But if it's based on the Golden Age arc adaptations that the uh that the movies did then yeah it's around a b tier it was very very enjoyable is it as good as the manga hell no it's not is it even as good as the original tv series i would not agree uh, i would not think so i think the tv series did berserk well enough it it did really really well in capturing what was good about berserk and i feel like the i feel like watching the movies we got you know it was we got like the bigger you know, we got the bigger battle scenes, we got the Eclipse, which, you know, looked grander, everything looked better, looked grander. But the best parts of Berserk were never those moments. The best part of Berserk were the quieter character moments. It was falling in love with the cast uh, and seeing Gus's journey with all of the people around him. Uh, and the movies didn't capture that as well as the original TV series did for me. So, that would go in a B tier. Too long didn't read, too long didn't watch, just read the manga. Exactly. Golden Kamui season four, haven't seen. This one, haven't seen. Um, <clears throat> let me see, what is this one? Watch Golden Kamui, yeah. Should I watch should I watch Golden Kamui or should I read Golden Kamui? I've always like I've always like debated whether I should watch it or read it. I've never gotten a definitive answer on whether I should watch it or read it. Read? Read? Yeah. That's what I that's why I haven't gone out of my way to watch it. Because I've heard a lot of people say I should just read the manga. <clears throat> Oh, this one's Futoku no Guild. Um, I watched one. I remember watching one episode. I'm gonna put this in no opinion. I remember watching one episode of this, and I have no opinion. It must be shit because I can't remember anything about this. <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember anything about this. <laughs> I, I watched it back in my fall 2020 video. <clears throat> I remember, oh my god, there's so many fucking second seasons. I'm gonna put all of the second seasons I didn't watch in the no opinions now. Because we we had so many second seasons. We had so many fucking second seasons this year. That, um, that I did not end up watching. What else is a second season I didn't watch? Uh, Uzaki-chan. Oh, this one's a second season as well. <clears throat> Alright, is there any other? What the fuck is this one? Does anyone recognize this show at all? I do not... I do not recognize... Oh, thank you very much, Payne, for the five gift subs. What the fuck is that show? Yo, I'm not gonna lie, that looks like a really cool fucking poster. <laughs> that actually looks like a legit cool poster. And I don't know where that's from. I do not recognize that at all. I can't find this poster anywhere. What the fuck is this? <laughs> Uh, four boys at girl school is that one? Oh, it's this one. What's it called again? I forgot what it's called. <laughs> yeah, I remember watching the first three episodes of this one. This one was okay. Um, 
didn't really do much to make me continue wanting to watch it. <clears throat> God damn, I'm running out of coffee. I'm running out of coffee, damn it. <clears throat> um Yeah, this this one this one goes in mid tier. It was it, it was it was like kind of enjoyable, <laughs> but it didn't really do anything to make me want want to go back. I just want to talk about things I like. Alright, let's just go to what I want to talk about. Mob Psycho Season 3. Mob Psycho Season 3. So I remember, I remember when Mob 3 was announced, I remember saying this previously, but I couldn't see really where the story was going to go. And I couldn't see the events of Mob Season 3 managing to build up to something um, that's... How can I word this? I couldn't see any events of Mob Season 3 uh, that could eclipse what happened in Season 2. And I remember seeing, and I remember saying that I didn't think Mob Psycho was, ne uh, Mob, I, I didn't see a necessity in Mob Psycho Season 3 at all. Um, and I think I was partially right. What, uh, Mob Psycho Season 3 to me felt like a 12 episode long epilogue I don't think it eclipsed season two. I think season two is fucking peak. I think it's fucking incredible. Um, but do I think it's necessarily? Uh, do I think it's necessary? Fuck yes, I think it's necessary. Um, I don't think, I, watching Mob season three, I don't think it necessarily needed to be 12 episodes in the same way that I don't think, you know, I don't, a lot of, a lot of season three to me felt like a little like, like fluff. You know, there are some really, really good moments in season three, but was it as like full and action packed as season two? No, it, it wasn't at all. Uh, it, it felt a bit drawn out. And I, f I felt that some of the events of season three could have been condensed into a shorter season to like really hit harder. But what I will say is that the moments that did go hard and the moments that did hit proved why Mob Psycho is one of the greatest anime of all time, in my opinion. To me, I, you know, I'm very happy to eat my words and say I was wrong when I say season three was not needed. Season three was definitely needed uh, because it did an incredible job at bringing a close to all of the characters and closing off all of the character arcs. And I couldn't think of a more perfect way to end Mob Psycho. And it felt, it's been so fucking long. It's been so fucking long since I've seen a show close itself off so perfectly. Um, I'm not going to spoil what happens. I'm not going to spoil what happens in the ending. But it, it does like, what, what I will say is that definitely, uh, definitely, definitely shed a tear. <laughs> I, I definitely shed a tear when uh, in, in that final episode, episode 12 was perfect. In my opinion, I definitely shed a tear. I think I think that last arc is is like for that last arc alone for that final four episodes this season proved why it was needed you know maybe it didn't prove why all 12 episodes needed to be there but it definitely proved to me okay this is why mob 3 exists this is why we needed more mob after season two i think if i were to think back right if if, if i were to think back if they could bring some aspects to season three into season two. Like if, if they didn't completely close off all of the plot events of season two and brought some of the episodes of season three and mix season three and season two into like one long season, I think it would have been like absolutely perfect. Like perfect, perfect. Because then we wouldn't have had some of the slower episodes. It wouldn't have been like drawn out as much in some of the, some of the events of season three. But that's, that's me. 
that's me kind of just that's that's me kind of just nitpicking you know that's that's me kind of just nitpicking um my enjoyment of season three was not as good as season two um to me i think season two is still peak mob but season three was still definitely needed and if i were to judge the season by itself it's still fucking great it's still fucking great um the the fight in the middle of season three was fucking insane bones like studio bones is at that at that point studio bones is just fucking flexing uh mob psycho is an easy s tier for me it's an easy it's a mob psycho season three is an easy s tier for me <clears throat> dimple holy fuck that that dimple fight um like chainsaw like like chainsaw man mob psycho had an s tier production through and through and i can't i can't begin to say how rare that is because studio bones have done some good stuff um studio bones have done some good stuff but even by the high standards mob psycho not just season three not just season two but season one as well mob psycho from an animation perspective has felt like a passion project they've it felt like they've put all of their eggs into this to make it the best it can be and this is the adaptations anime uh, this is the adaptation that manga dream of okay it is uh mob psycho will go down as a modern classic uh and yeah now now that it's like now that it's got its perfect ending i can i can say i can i can say that i do think mob psycho as a whole mobs now that it's ended mob psycho as a whole i think even though it's just recently ended i don't think i'm going to get recency bias over this because i do think it's going to go down as one of the best anime ever made and that's my opinion so even though i had my problems with season three that doesn't detract from everything that mob psycho has done <clears throat> Moving on, fuck, I need another fucking pee break. Holy shit. Sorry guys, my bladder is just going fucking... It's, <laughs> Sydney, got, Sydney got me so much coffee, holy shit. <sighs> oh my fucking god. Someone said mob higher than Chainsaw Man. Yep, I would, I would put, I would put Mob Season Three higher than Chainsaw Man. Just, just, just for the facts. Just, just for, just for the ending alone. Just for the ending alone. And I, I, I'm not basing this on all of Chainsaw Man. I'm basing this, I'm basing this on Chainsaw Man Season One, which is what I've only seen. Is it higher than Bleach? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do think Mob is higher than Bleach. 
And I, and I, and I ain't changing that opinion, man. I, I ain't changing that opinion. <laughs> um, yeah, fucking, what else is there to say about mob? Um, fucking Reagan, man. Ray, can, can, can we, can we, can we have a moment? Can we have a moment just to, just to appreciate how much of a fucking bro Reagan is? What a, what a, what a fuck, what a fucking bro, man. What a fucking bro. <clears throat> Woo! All right. Moving on. Foo Foo Ijo. Uh, Love the content. Have you or are you watching the LOTGH remake? Doesn't get much attention, but I think it's one of the most underrated adaptations coming out. Actually, yes, I have. Um, I don't see it on this list, so I was hoping to talk about it. Uh, I've been watching Legends of the Galactic Heroes. Kind of kept that on the down low, because uh, just, just, just kind of, kind of, kind of kept that on the down low. I'm really, really enjoying Legends of the Galactic Heroes, especially the new remakes. Uh, Have you watched the new adaptation from Type Moon by UFO Table? I have not, but um, the Legends of the Galactic Hero remake has been really, really good. I'm not gonna talk about it like in a video or something until probably I see how much of it gets adapted. Uh, but it's Legend of the Galactic Heroes. It's really, really fucking good. Go watch it. And go watch Legends of the Galactic Heroes if you haven't already. Moving on, Fufu Ijo. I think this one, this one's a very, very solid show. I'm gonna put this at beta. It's, it's a solid, it's a solid romance. I don't know if my mind's just been fucking poisoned. <clears throat> I don't know, I don't know if my mind is, has been poisoned because I see a nice solid romance and I'm going, I'm, and I'm like, eh, eh, where's the spice? Where's the spice? <laughs> We 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 need, we need we need something to like spice things up. We need something to spice things up. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on, just have a nice vanilla romance. Get the fuck out of here. Get get out of here. It is a solid show though. Uh, it's it's it has like a little bit of spice with it with its kind of like love triangles and everything like that. And you know the people. It's oh, you know what you know what this do you know what it reminds me of. It reminds me of a Black Mirror episode where oh. Yeah? Yeah? Need something? Okay. Yeah, sure. Sorry, guys. Sorry guys, had to be a good husband for a second there. <clears throat> we good? Yeah, we good. We good. Um, did I finish talking about this? Oh yeah, I was. I was gonna. <clears throat> um, I was gonna say like the premise of this reminds me of a Black Mirror episode. I can't remember which episode it is, but it's the one about dating apps, where they like got like paired and matched up together. 
Um, that's kind of what the premise reminds me of. So, you know, it's got, it's, it's got a little bit of spice because the premise revolves around Japan having a school where they have, like, mock marriages and, you know, you have to, like, pretend to be a fucking married couple and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, I, I, I like that aspect to it and it's, it's a solid romance. Uh, it has the potential to... Uh, it, ha it has the potential to improve in later seasons as we get more of the story. But right now, it's like a solid... It's a solid show. I'll give it, like, a solid B. A solid B. Just give me more spice. Give me, give me, give me, give me more spice. Come on, where's, where's, where's the uh, not related by blood little sister character, guys? I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. That was, that was a joke. That was a joke, guys. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. My Hero Academia season six. Anyone, anyone watching My Hero Academia season six? Anyone watching it? Anyone still watching My Hero Academia season six? So, I dropped My Hero Academia like halfway through season five. Um, and then I didn't watch My Hero Academia for a very, very long time. And then I started watching it again. And I am now completely, completely caught up to My Hero Academia season six. And it is... It is the best that My Hero Academia has been in a very long time, in my opinion. It's a low A. It's a low A. <clears throat> this, uh, the, the recent arc is the best that it's been in a very, very long time. And this is coming from someone who fell out of love with My Hero Academia. Chats Molden. <laughs> nah. <laughs> It's, um, <clears throat> it's, it's, it, what, was, what was I saying? What was I saying? I've, uh, chat, you've, uh, you've made me lose my trail of thought. You've made me lose my trail of thought. Um, anyone who stopped watching My Hero Academia, um, I totally fucking get it because I did the same thing. Uh, and I've heard, fr I've, the reason I picked it back up was that I heard from manga readers that this hard, this next arc was going to go hard. And, in a sense, they were right. This was this is the best that it's been for a very, very long time. Having said that, if this is My Hero Academia at its peak, at its the best, at the best that it's going to be, um, then it kind of like to me watching this arc made me realize how much better other shonen shows are doing right now. It's not peak. That's, uh, can, 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 can manga readers confirm that it's not peak? Because for the events that happened, it seems like a pretty climactic arc. It seems like a pretty fucking climactic arc. A lot of fucking things happened. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of things happened that I'm like, oh, whew, we're bringing out all of the stops, man. We are bringing out all of the stops. So I, I don't know, I don't know how my Hero Academia can get better than it does in, you know, can can get much better than it does in this season because, you know, I will say it's gotten to a point where this this season felt like everyone was involved. Absolutely everyone. We, it was it's not it wasn't just the characters in the, you know, in the high school where everyone, everyone in the hero organization got involved. It was kind of like the build up of all of the previous seasons and everything like that. Uh, we got, we, you know, all of the villains had their time, had their character build up and everything like that. I can't remember the main character's name anymore. Uh, not the main character, the main villain. What the? I'm so bad with names. Um, fucking. Shigaraki. That's it. That's it. Um, I don't know. One thing, one thing that bothered me a bit, one thing that bothered me a little bit was how OP they made Shigaraki. They, they made him like stupidly OP. <laughs> He's like, I, 
I really, really enjoyed, I really, really enjoyed his backstory. I really, really enjoyed his backstory. Um, and I feel like for the longest time since, you know, since the events, uh, since the event with All Might and uh, All For One, you know, if, if it felt like, it felt like My Hero Academia was missing a big villain and then Shigaraki had to step up to the plate to be that big villain. Um, and it just felt like they, he went from, he went from just being a normal, a normal villain to a really stupidly OP villain overnight it felt like can he be goku though <laughs> probably actually his power's pretty op mm. i don't know all he needs to do is fucking touch goku once right and goku he doesn't even need to touch goku <laughs> but to be fair goku can fly i forgot about that goku can fly <laughs> but can he be black goku <laughs> <laughs> But um, but yeah, it's uh, this season it felt like they it, it was a culmination of all the previous seasons. Uh, felt like you know, felt like the best My Hero Academia's been in a long time, but still felt like a step below what other shonen what sh what other shonen's are doing. And I don't know, I don't know what more it can do. I I honestly I don't know what more My Hero Academia can do after the season to really sell me on my my hero academia in comparison to other shonens i just think it's a step below and i think because it's, it's not it's it's not so much the character writing because i think they have put they have put ample time into the characters um at this moment i'm just deku is just the most uninteresting protagonist like he gets I, I feel less and less invested in Deku the more seasons go on. And it's it's funny. It's funny because this season I'm like, fuck, I'm kind of like, I kind of like Bakugo more. Fuck, I fucking hated Bakugo. Now I'm like, fuck, man, I feel bad for Bakugo. Why is, why is he not the fucking protagonist, man? He's, he's way better. He's way more interesting. <laughs> yeah, like a, a lot of, a lot of my issues come down to the fact that for all of the interesting characters in this, because I feel like what two character arcs I've really liked. One I've said Bakugo. The other character arc I really like is Endeavor's character arc. I've really, really liked Endeavor. Um, and you know, all the things, all the recent things that have happened with him and how he's trying to become a better dad and just all of the realization he's gone through as well. Um and then we go back to Deku and he's like, well, he's getting more OP. He's he's getting, you know, with with his new power. I'm not going to spoil what his new powers are, but with, you know, the real powers come to light and fruition and everything. It just if if it feels like both Deku and Shigaraki are gaining, you know, are gaining powers for the simple fact that it feels like they need to gain powers. It doesn't, it just doesn't feel deserved, you know? Fucking, my, my boy, my boy Bakugo. I'm, I'm, guys, I am now a Bakugo simp. I am now a Bakugo simp, guys. He deserves the power way more. Lamillion, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. I'm still going to keep watching My Hero Academia. It's My Hero Academia to me has become my modern bleach where I complain about it every time, every time it comes out. I complain about it, but like bleach, I'm going to stick with it till the end because I've just, I'm, I'm way too, I'm way too deep in. I'm way too deep in. <laughs> Ain't no way you just said that. <laughs> You know what, guys? You know what? Today, I just want to piss off Bleach fans. I just kind of want to uh, piss off Bleach fans. <laughs> Why not, guys? Why not? <laughs> you know what, guys? If you're going to criticize some... Many people have criticized Bleach. Many people have criticized My Hero Academia without reading the source material or without sticking sticking with it to the end. I'm sticking with it to the end, okay? I'm way too deep into this to stop midway, okay? I'm sticking with it to the end. 
So if I have my criticisms, I'm gonna fucking say it. <laughs> Moving on. Two. Oh, this one. I've not got much to say about this one. This one's... This one was just... Uh, this, it was... Let's, let's... These are all just like mid-shows. That's a mid-show. That's a mid-show. These, these are all mid-shows, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get past the mid shows. <laughs> oh, is this Peter Grill season two? Fuck. I forgot about Peter Grill. Is this one worth watching? <laughs> this one goes into no opinion. I watched season one. Haven't got around to watching season two. Is, <laughs> is, watch, is it worth watching pure, purely for the culture? All right. Pop Team Epic. Uh... Pop Team Epic, again, it's a solid show. Pop Team Epic is just a, it's it's a solid show at this point. It's I'm never I'm never like I never go out of my way to watch Pop Team Epic. Um, but sometimes if I see a clip on YouTube, and sometimes if I'm in just the mood, Pop Team Epic's the kind of show I watch when I'm eating something and I just need to put something on in the background. It's a solid show. Give me laughs. Um, but it's, it, to, to me, I just, I don't like it that much. It's just a solid show for me. <laughs> Japanese family guy. <laughs> oh man. Is that a praise or is that an insult? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> My guy. <laughs> Ugh. All right, moving on. Ravens of the Inner Palace. Oh. Would I put this up B tier or A tier? I'm going to put this up B tier. I think this is a really, really underrated show. Um, didn't, like, personally, it didn't appeal to me too much on like a personal enjoyment level, which is why I'm putting out the beta. But I think it's a highly, highly underrated show. If you kind of like, uh, one thing I didn't, one one thing that didn't really grab me was that the fact that he had like, I'm, 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 <clears throat> the kind of, the kind of like time period doesn't really like the time period it takes place in, doesn't really interest me too much. What is it about? It's kind of like, how can I describe this? It's kind of like a, <clears throat> it's a mystery show that takes place in like historic China, although it's not really like real history because it kind of like goes on a lot of like Chinese folklore and everything like that. <clears throat> it's, it's a, yeah, it's kind of like a, it's like kind of like a court drama kind of thing. This is the kind of show that I would recommend I can't, I, I can't say this, I, I can't say this. I was, I, was, I was going to say, this kind of show would really appeal to my mum because she loves, she is like, she loves this kind of thing. Yo, I, I, was this a, I don't know, okay. Was this a fucking Asian thing where my mum, my mum's soap operas were like the old historical Chinese soap operas. There's like anyone, anyone, else, anyone else who grew up in Southeast Asia. Was this just a my mum thing, or or was this was this something that was just true with a lot of Asian mums? Okay. <laughs> like when I, when, every time I go down, my mum would be watching a badly tied dubbed. Chinese Chinese historical soap opera. And that's the kind of show. This show gave me the same vibes as that. Okay, this 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 show gave me the same vibes as that. <laughs> is that a, is that an insult? I don't think it's an insult. I think it's a solid show. It just doesn't appeal to me. <laughs> but it would have I think my mum would really enjoy this, man. I think my I think my mum would really fucking enjoy this. <laughs> Yo, all this needs is a bad all this needs is a bad Thai dub, and my mum would fucking eat this shit up, man. 
<laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, reincarnated as a sword. This one is a low B tier for me. I actually didn't enjoy this one as much as I thought I would. Isekai Trash, I think this season of Reincarnated Sword got eclipsed by how much I enjoyed Eminence in the Shadows. <laughs> I... I, um... <clears throat> I, th I think because I enjoyed Eminence in the Shadow so much, it brought like it it brought my enjoyment of reincarnated uh, reincarnated as a sword down for me. I think it's a solid isekai. It's a solid isekai, um, but I, I don't really have much to say about it. It's 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 an enjoyable isekai. It doesn't do anything amazingly. Doesn't doesn't really like break the mold or anything like that, but it doesn't do anything. It's it's not a bad isekai either. It's not like mid tier garbage. It's a it's it's on the higher level of the isekai tier list if you compare it to like the generic. Here's your here's your generic isekai of the season. It's better than that. I think I honestly think it's worth a watch. Would you would I go out my way to recommend this to everyone? No, I wouldn't. But it's an enjoyable watch. Um. I like the fact that I I was afraid that they were going to make the pair like stupidly OP like a lot of other isekai. I like the fact I like the fact that like I like the fact that the main pair did find a real challenge. They weren't just blazing through every dungeon. It was they weren't stupidly OP compared to some other isekai protagonists. Um I liked that. But you know, I've seen a lot of isekai, and this one is one of them. And that's all I'll say about that. No one's told he no. <laughs> all all it's missing, right? All it's missing is if there's a scene where the sword turns into an atomic bomb, then I'll be interested again. Then I'll be like, okay, you have my attention. But I mean, come on, come on. No atomic bomb? What, what's the point? What's the point? No one's turning into an atomic bomb. Does he speak really bad English? No, he doesn't, okay? So I'm just, I'm just simping so much for Eminence in the Shadow, but that just... It's... I feel, I feel bad, I feel bad because it's probably a better show than that. I just enjoyed Eminence in the Shadow too much. Uh, Rene Flops. Rene Flops. How much, how much do we rate the culture in this one, guys? <laughs> Ah, <sighs> uh, this one, this one was a flop. It's D tier for me. It feels like to me, etchy shows have gotten to a point. Etchy shows have gotten to a point where basic ass etchy just doesn't do it anymore. <laughs> what the fuck am I saying? Oh my god. I can't believe I just said that. You know, if you're gonna give me like a vanilla etchy, that just with some of the shit that with some of the shit that anime is produced now, it just doesn't stand out much anymore. You know, if you're just gonna give me some basic ass boob and like, oh look, I'm falling on her panties. Oh no, you showed me like a panty shot. You know, that's just like I see that and I'm like, bro, really, really. You know, that's that's it's it's not even. It's not even so bad it's good anymore. It's just, I think it's just bad. And I think it's just uninteresting compared to some some other like high, I'm gonna say high tier etchy. I think Studio Passion have just completely broken the etchy genre for me. Cause seeing what Studio Passion has done with their etchy series, I'm like, how can any other etchy series compete? Right? How, how can any other etchy series compete anymore? <clears throat> Studio Passion literally made this? Oh shit, I completely forgot. <laughs> okay. I'm a fucking clown. I'm a I'm a clown. I forgot that they made this. <laughs> Alright. My point still stands though. If this if Studio Passion made this, they've made some other like 
I mean, they made they made better etchy shows than this. Okay. And compared to some of compared to their peak, this one just doesn't do it for me anymore. <laughs> God fucking damn it. I can't believe I just did that. <laughs> oh god. Alright, that was your that was your clown. Uh that was your clown moment for the day. There you go. Drink it in, guys, drink it in. Wait, this studio patch am I am I am I looking at this wrong? The studio patch shall not make interspecies reviewers. I'm looking at the list of anime that they've made and passion. Okay, they did make interspecies reviewers. All right, I wanted to make sure I've got the right. I because I was thinking like interspecies reviewers, um, and the labyrinth isekai this year, and I'm like, I swear they made the labyrinth isekai as well. Right, let me check this up. Who makes the Labyrinth Isekai? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, that was Studio Passion as well. Okay, this list is just wrong then. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they made they made the Labyrinth Isekai um, and they made In Species Reviewers and I'm like, that, that, that. To me, like that's that's the peak now. That's the peak, and this, this like, if you're not if you're not gonna if you're not gonna reach that peak, then this is just a basic ass etchy show. <clears throat> Moving on. What's this one. Romantic killer. This one... This one is short. I don't think I've seen this one. It was a Netflix show? Oh, okay. That explains why I didn't watch it. It was on the Netflix list. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't watched this. Um, because... Netflix apparently fucking killed it. <clears throat> All right, moving on then. Shinobi no Itoki. I really, really wanted to like this. I, I, I really, really wanted to like this more uh, because it's by Troika. And I remember saying that, <clears throat> I, I, I remember saying that it like the first, the first two episodes just seemed like a lot of fun. It, it, it seemed like a lot of fun. Um, and the first two episodes were a lot of fun, and then it didn't really, it didn't really continue that train for me. Um, it, it kind of like pissed me off in a lot of sense because <laughs> it pissed, it pissed me off that everyone's like getting, everyone was getting mad at the protagonist, uh, for like, you know, for not having, for not being, it's, it was, it was like, it was like so stupid, right? Because everyone's getting mad at the protagonist for doing like stupid shit and stuff like that. Um, because he was like secretly part of a ninja clan and everyone was like trying to assassinate him and everything like that. Um, but, I, but I'm just like, why the fuck would you be part of a secret ninja clan and you not try to train your fucking son or have them go to fucking ninja school to begin with? Hot milf though, sad, yeah. Very, very sad. Very, very sad. <sighs> To give him a normal life, yeah. But you must have known something was going to happen. Um, I really wanted to like this one. I wanted to have fun with this one. This one, this one just wasn't it for me. Is it a D tier? No, it's better than some of these other shows. It was a bit more fun. I'll, I'll put it. I'll put it at like a C tier. It's a C tier. It's not really worth watching. Moving on, Spy Family. Spy Family for me. <clears throat> Spy Family for me, where would I put Spy Family? I would put Spy Family in, like, Spy Family for me is an A tier. It's, there's never been a point where Spy Family has like fucking blown me away. Spy Family is always just consistently awesome, right? A for awesome. Spy Family, like, Spy Family is just consistently a really, really good show. 
I watch it and every time if I just if I'm having a bad day if I'm feeling bad I just put on an episode of Spike's Family okay it's nice it's wholesome I come out of episode I come out of every episode feeling fucking good about myself. I feel good. I feel wholesome. It's just, it's, it maintains that level of consistency throughout its entire run, in my opinion. And I got to give it praise for that because I was afraid that I was going to get bored of Spike's family. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was afraid that I was going to get bored of it when I got bored of like the concept, but they managed to make things like, they managed... They managed to make it never feel stale. And um, and yeah, I just, I don't have too much to say about it other than it's just a really good show. It's a really nice, good show. It's, a, it's just, if you need a hot, if you need a dull, if you need a dose of wholesomeness in your life, if you just need to fucking smile and feel happy, just watch Spike's Family, man. It's just, it's just consistently good. Anya is adorable and wholesome. She is. She fucking is. Um, yeah, Spice Family gets my approval for the best family that I've seen this year because everything about how this dysfunctional family functions just puts a smile on my face, man. Puts a fucking smile on my face. FBI, you go away, man. You go away, FBI. We're here for the wholesomeness, man. We are here for the wholesomeness. <clears throat> All right, moving on to the last few. Talking about Netflix killing off shows, JoJo Part 6. Now, who has watched JoJo Part 6 or who's forgotten that JoJo Part 6 is out? JoJo Part 6 is, let me, let me put this, let me put this up first. Jojo Part 6 to me is. It's 8. No, it's 8 here. It's 8 here. Uh, I've, now, now that I've caught up, <clears throat> now that I've caught up with Jojo Part 6, is it my favorite Jojo Part? No, it is not. Um, I would say that Part 5 is still my favorite Jojo Part. Now that I've seen all of the anime, by the way, I'm not a manga reader. I'm purely anime only. Uh, part five is my favorite part overall. Uh, the ending, the last half of part four is to me, that that to me is my favorite of all of Jojo I've seen so far. Um, I just didn't enjoy the first half as much. Um, so part five gets the consistency, but if I if I had to say where I think peak Jojo is, it's the latter half of part four. <clears throat> I'm waiting for part seven. I heard a lot about part seven. In terms of part five, part five was, it was, it's just Jojo. It's good. It's, it's good. You know, I, I can't say anything bad about it. Uh, the ending was interesting because I had not... I'd, I'd heard snippets about the ending of part six and it really felt like the ending of part six was kind of like, it, it kind of was kind of like a farewell to Jojo in a sense, right? Without, without spoiling what happens. It was, it was kind of, it kind of felt like, it, it felt like an ending ending. You know what I mean? It, it felt like, it felt like something new is going to be around the corner now. <clears throat> um, and it makes me very, very excited for how they go for what happens in part seven because now I kind of, I kind of see what the hype is behind part seven because it kind of, it kind of feels like you know it might be taking a new kind of avenue or something or it might be taking a new route. I don't know. I haven't read the manga. All I know, all I know is that part seven, everyone fucking loves part seven. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, there's nothing really bad I could say about Jojo Part 6. I, it's, it's not that I think, it's, it's not that I think Part 6 is bad. It's just that I've enjoyed other parts more. And that's, that's the worst thing I can say about Part 6, right? <laughs> I, I don't really have anything bad. I think Pochi, it was, 
I think Pochi was a very, very interesting villain. I just think there are other more interesting villains in JoJo, you know? Hey, yo, misogyny. <laughs> God fucking damn it. Oh, sorry, not Pochi. <laughs> I don't know why I said Pochi. <laughs> <laughs> Jolene is a great MC though. Jolene is a great MC. I, th I think I, I, I really like Jolene a lot in terms of uh, Pochi the Rock. <laughs> we'll be talking about Pochi the Rock next. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I really, really enjoyed Jolene. Yeah, sorry. Let me say let me say that again. I really, really enjoyed Jolene as a character. I thought this season had some really, really fucking interesting stands. Um, but like, I, I could tell Araki was going off the fucking balls with some of these ideas, with some of these stand battles, man. Like, fuck, what the fuck was Bohemian Rhapsody, man? What a, f what a fucking crazy stand. And uh, I, can't, I can't remember the other stand name, um, but the stand that basically turned Jojo into Memento for like a few episodes. That was, that, that was fucking wild, man. I fucking, I fucking love some of these stand battles. Jail, Jailhouse Rock, that was the one. Yeah, Made in Heaven. I'm not gonna talk about Made in Heaven for, for spoiler reasons, but <laughs> that was, that was a fucking what? Holy shit, man. What I, what I will say though, what I will say is that, you know, I don't, now that part six was over, I didn't see anything that was more OP than Gold Experience Requiem. That, like, Araki really did. What the f <laughs> What the fuck was he doing during all of part six, man? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. But yeah, Jojo part six, well worth a watch. Oh, I forgot to mention. Um, once again, once again, I fucking love what David Production does with the opening every time there's like a major plot event. Uh, if you don't, if you haven't watched part six yet, they do exactly the same thing somewhere in part six. They mix up the opening somewhere in part six. And I, fi I fucking love it every time I do that. I'm not gonna spoil when, so you need to watch the opening if you watch Jojo Part Six. Just, just, uh, just, just a heads up, guy. Just a heads up. And uh, oh, I really want to talk about it. Let me just say, uh, let me just say, the uh, the ending song, the the ending song was of of the final episode was just oh, fuck, man. Oh, 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 that fucking ending. Oh man. Oh. Woo! That hit, man. God, that hit so hard. Oh, oh, I wanna, I wanna spoil it so bad, but I, I, I can't, man. I can't. All I'm gonna say is, God damn it, hit so hard, man. It hit so fucking hard. Oh man. Oh, oh. You know, that's that's all I'm gonna say. I very much enjoyed JoJo Part Six. All right, pee break time. <laughs>
All right, only a few, only a few shows left. All right, what's next? Oh, uh, this is the Taming Villainess one. <clears throat> uh, let's see. This one was also a little disappointing for me. I don't know if I expected more. This one was just meh. It was... It's a tsun, Tsundere villain anime. That's... Yeah. We got one where the male is the Tsundere for one. Uh, this this one, this one, this one goes in C tier. It's... It was, it was, it was, it was meh. It, um, it didn't really... One, it didn't really appeal to me. And two... You know, I've I can go for shows that don't appeal to me um, if they're like doing something really exciting or if it's really well done. Uh, I I don't think this was like awesomely done. It was a mess show. I'll give it a C. <sighs> All right. Um, to your eternity, season two. Now, I fucking loved season one. Season one was like season one of To Your Eternity was incredible as one of the strongest opening episodes of anime I've like seen. Like if you watched that opening episode of To Your Eternity, um, season one, and you don't feel anything, I you know I I would I would think that uh, you're a robot or something because holy shit, it hits fucking hard. Season two of To Your Eternity has been a disappointment so far. I ain't going to lie f about that. It's not a bad show. It's, 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 not, it's not a bad show. It's not like, it's, it just, I, th I think after season one, um, this one has felt like it's really taken, for, for what's been released so far, this one has just, it's, it's just not hit as hard at all you know it lost its flavor I don't, I don't know b is too high no my dude my dude have you seen the shows in c tier it ain't that bad it ain't that come on guys it's it's, it's not that bad it's just it's just falling off a little bit guys come on come on <laughs> come on guys like um to me like season one like season one Emotionally hit super super fucking hard. I cried like I like I shed I shed like tears several times during like many points of season one. Um, I haven't really felt much during season two. I felt like a little bit sad, but it's definitely not been nearly as emotional as season one was. It's only halfway through, so who knows? But definitely this first half uh, has not been as good as season one was at all, unfortunately. Moving on. Udase Yatsura. This one, I think this one's, this one's either a high B or low A. Let me see the other shows. It's a, my enjoyment, yeah, it's, it's a it's a high B. I I'm <clears throat> like I said. I I I'm enjoying this a lot as well. I think they're doing a really really good job remaking this. If you want to look at an anime, if you want to look at an old anime and you want a case study about how to remake it, I think this one should definitely be on your list because I really like how they've modernized the style while still making it feel like a very good classic anime obviously there's going to be tropes uh that's going to be a little bit cliche and stuff like that because it is a very very old anime and you see that you see that with it is a yatsuda uh, i mean this is like kind of like the birthplace of waifu culture in general because i think it is a yatsuda is like not only the first tsundere uh, sorry, no, fucking uh, Lum. I should, should, should say Lum. I, th I think Lum is not only like the first waifu, but also the first tsundere as well. Um, so there are some things that feel a little bit dated, but it still feels very enjoyable. It's it's a very, very enjoyable show. 
No one says darling better than lum. Yes, I agree. Get that fake zero two shit out of here. Okay, this is this is the original darling right here. Also, I just missed this. I realized this. I'm just I was just like scrolling through. Thank you so much to Fishy Hats and Alstracy for the 10 and 20 gift subs. Why are you gonna do this when I'm at the toilet, man? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Why, why, why did you both literally do that when I went for a toilet break? <laughs> Alright. Bocci the Rock. Okay. So guys, if you know me and you know my content at all, and you know that I am not a fan of Slice of Life. I'm not a fan of cute girls doing cute things. I am not a fan of Moe shows, just in general. And I think that Bocci Bocci the Rock has been my, big, my biggest surprise in anime all year. Bar none. <laughs> I did not expect to come in to this show liking it. I didn't even, I, I didn't even expect to come into this show really, really, really finding it entertaining at all. I thought I would get another case where it's a K on show, where it's this highly praised, highly sought after slice of life show that just doesn't connect with me. Check Bochi's rating on Mel after you rank it. But I think that I think that Bochi the Rock is possibly the best slice of life show I've ever seen. It is absolutely insane to me how much I fucking love this show. <laughs> this is this has been the biggest this has been the biggest plot twist of uh this is this has been the biggest plot twist of the year for me i did not expect to like bocce the rock as much as i did okay it is it is it is insane to me that one like the one show to me that really convinced me like what is magical about the medium of animation okay wasn't chainsaw man wasn't mob psycho it was bocce it was Bocchi the Rock. And the reason for that is the way they use animation to convey some of these feelings is just, it, it hits you in a way that can't be conveyed in any other way but animation, okay? Part of the reason I love it so much is because we've seen we've seen a lot of aspects of like Bocce the Rock before. You know, we've had shows about introverts, you know, we've had like Komi-san, we've had like Aharen, we've had, We've had like we we we've we've literally had a show called like Hitori Bochi, I think, right? And I've like they've they've all tackled like similar like similar aspects of like someone with a like crippling social anxiety. But every time I see Bochi like every time I see Bochi have like this her own like anxiety episode, and the way that they use animation to convey what she's going through. It just, it relates on you to a personal level that is so relatable, it actually is kind of painful, you know? <laughs> it's, it's, it's so painfully relatable the way they convey some of these moments. And I'm like, you watch some of this and you're like, I'm laughing, but I'm f I've fucking been there, man. This is getting a bit too real. This is getting too fucking real right now. Uh... It goes above and beyond what a adaptation needs to do for a slice of life. I think it's funnier than any other comedy anime that's aired this year. Uh, and that's partly to do with how above and beyond they've gone with like some of these moments, some of these, some of these socially awkward moments that she goes through. If you have a single introvert bone in your body, you will enjoy Bocce the Rock because they do so well in portraying what goes through your mind 
in these little interactions where you kind of you're, you're kind of feeling like a little bit awkward and you don't really know what to say and you're kind of overthinking everything okay but even just beyond that one thing I really enjoyed is that they're fucking giving a shit about the music as well. The music is actually really fucking good in this show. The music seems really, really good in this show. Um, it's. I'm gonna get hate for this. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Get, I'm gonna absolutely gonna get hate for this. Bocce the Rock is everything I wanted K on to be. I wanted K on to be. Okay. The reason. The reason. I didn't like K-On is because all of the aspects I wanted this to be in K-On is in what is CSM fans mauled. It's a gorgeous sight. <laughs> I'm just look, I, I I'm declaring war against Shonen fans today. Look, everything that I didn't like about K-On was because everything I was looking for was in Bochi is like was in Bochi the Rock. And I'm not saying that they're the same show. I'm not at all. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is every asp everything that I wanted to be in K-On just happened to be in Bochi the Rock. Uh, because they're two different shows, in my opinion. <sighs> but yeah, Bocce the Rock has been my surprise of the year. It is, I never, ever, ever thought I would put a slice of life show on the S tier. Um, but I'm glad that Bocce the Rock's there. Bocce the Rock is an S tier, guys. And you know what? Do you know? Do you know what? Do you know what scares me? Do you know, do you know what scares me the most? <clears throat> it scares me that if a slice of life show needs to be this good in order for me to like it, I'm just never gonna like another slice of life show in my life. Because that's that's how fucking high they've set the bar for. <laughs> that's how high they've set the bar for me here. <laughs> Okay, I don't mind Boki being above Bleach. Boki is the second coming of K-On. <laughs> Boki. <laughs> Boki the Rock. All right. Last show. We have Gundam the Witch from Mercury. This is the Gundam I've been waiting for, and so far it's fucking delivering. Honestly, um, I'm enjoying Gundam the Witch Mercury so much. And right now, I'm not going to speak too soon, because right now I'm going to put it at A tier. Uh, depending on how the rest of the show develops, it could jump up into S tier. You know, depending on how the second half goes. Right now, it's definitely like a solid, solid A tier. But it's been so long since I've just seen... It's been so long since I've been as excited for Mecha as Gundam the Witch for Mercury has made me. Uh, I think it's just been so nice seeing 2D mechs again. Just cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it again. It's just, it's just nice seeing 2D mechs. It's brought me back into when I first got into anime and stuff like that. Boomer, yes, yes, I am a boomer. Because like the last mecha show that I was really excited about was 86. Um, but I like the writing for 86, but just something about the 3D spiders, just it just doesn't hit the same as seeing 2D Gundams again, you know? Just just seeing just seeing 2D mechs. This was this was the mecha I, I was waiting for. <clears throat> I'm gonna hold off my opinion on Gundam the Witch Mercury before um, I've seen all of it, but please, if you're a new anime fan and you didn't grow up in the same era as like me watching Gurren Lagann, Code Geass, Gundam 00 or Gundam Wing or something like that, if you've never seen a Gundam in my life, in your life, please watch Gundam, th please watch Gundam the Witch from Mercury. This is... This should be the Gundam that gets new fans into Gundams. And I've been a bit disappointed actually with how many people are watching it because I look at the list on my anime chart, or sorry, I look at the list on my anime list and it's so fucking low down. I don't, I don't, I don't know how it's so low down because this is, this is fucking great. This is so good. 
And yet it's so low down. <laughs> so please, more people watch it. It's a really, really good show. <sighs> and that was it for fall 2022. Like I said, I think this was an incredible fucking season. It was so stacked, right? It was so stacked because I think, um, I think in any other season, some of these A tier shows could easily be S tier shows. Um, but because, because this season was so stacked, these, like, we had some shows that were just like a fucking cut above the rest in their respective genres. Um, but these A tier shows, like I said, in other weaker seasons, they were, they could easily have stood on top, man. <laughs> <laughs> they could easily have stood on top in other seasons. <clears throat> so, I'm glad that I got to piss off Bleach fans today. I'm <laughs> Just one more time. Just, just one more time. Let's let's list off all the shows that I think are better than Bleach. Let's that's the rest of the stream, guys. Let's just list off all the shows that I think are better than Bleach. Um <laughs> Uh, <laughs> nah, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you guys. The uh, Thousand Year Blood War arc, it's, it's, it's been the most excited for Bleach. What I've... about Cyberpunk Edgerunners? I think it was this season technically. Cyberpunk Edgerunners was last season, I think. Um, yeah, Cyberpunk Edgerunners was not this season. I'm gonna hold off my opinion for Cyberpunk Edgerunners. Um, and other shows from this year because I don't want to completely spoil my best of 2022 anime. Yes, last season. <clears throat> but I will say, I will say that Cyberpunk Edge Runners is better than Bleach. I just want all the salt. Just give me all the salt. Give me all the fucking salt. <laughs> I've not had enough salt. Uh. How long have I been streaming for? Two hours and a half. Checks out. Checks out. All right. <clears throat> Let me just uh, let me just do a quick outro for this YouTube video that it's obviously going to be. Um, I think I think we're gonna talk anime just a little bit more. <clears throat> All right, but that has been my tier list for the top anime in fall 2022. Did you agree with it? Did you disagree with it? Are you a Bleach fan? Please tell me more. Please, I I need to know your opinion in the comment section. Can't wait for all the salt. But anyway, that's it from me today. I've been Gigak, and I'll see you all next time. All right, there we go.